Hello everyone, hi and welcome to the channel of Wall Street Mojo. To know more about this video depreciation rate, watch the video till the end. And also if you are new to this channel, then you can subscribe us by clicking the bell icon that's shown below. Welcome everyone and today we have a topic with us. It's basically an accounting topic. It's, it's called as the depreciation rate. We are going to study this topic in a much more detailed format. But before that, we will have to, I'll give you a short synopsis of what exactly will go around in this particular topic. First of all, we are going to understand the meaning of the depreciation rate, what exactly it is all about. We are going to learn the formula with the help of an example in that particular regards. Examples will help us to understand more integrities, advantages, limitations, and finally get the conclusions on that. Well, let's begin with the topic. So first of all, what exactly is the depreciation rate? Well, the depreciation rate is basically the percentage rate in at which the asset is depreciated across the estimated product life of the asset. It may also be defined as the percentage of the long term percentage of the long term investment that is done in asset by the company, which company claims as tax deductible expense across the useful life of the asset. So it is different from each of the assets. So let me give you the depreciation rate formula, how exactly that has been worked out. Well, most widely used the method of the depreciation is the straight line method. Now, this is the rate that is calculated as per the following formula. The depreciation rate per year is equal to 1 divided by the useful life of the asset. So, the depreciation value per year, okay, depreciation value per year is equal to your cost of asset less the salvage value of asset divided by the depreciation rate per year now the cost of the asset it is it, it is basically the initial the cost of asset is basically the initial book value of the assets and it includes the taxes paid or shipping charges and so on and so forth the next is the useful life of the asset. The useful life of the asset is the time period for which an asset can function properly. So beyond the useful life, the asset is assumed to be the cost ineffective or not fit for the operational usage. So the useful life of a few of the assets like uh, computers, uh, you can say that uh, real assets, etc., which is defined by the respective revenue authority. So for example, computers are depreciated at over closely around five years uh, while vehicles are depreciated across uh, eight years in general now what exactly is the salvage value value of the asset after the useful life of the property at which the company may sell the asset it is also known as the scrap value now how exactly the formula works let me give you an example to make things more clear example number one is the cost of the vehicle is equal to 5 lakh the scrap value of machine is equal to 50,000 and the useful life of the asset is 5 years so the depreciation rate formula is equal to 1 divided by 5 that is equal to your 20% so the depreciation rate is 20% now here the cost of the vehicle is 5 lakh we know it the scrap value is 50,000 useful life is 5 years and the depreciation rate being 20% so that gives us the depreciation value per year which is the cost of the vehicle 5 lakh scrap value divided by the life of the assets that is five years that gives us depreciation value per year 90,000 well so the depreciation rate during the useful life of the vehicle was 20 percent I hope you got the idea now the example number two let's try and value that a company purchases let's say around 40 units of storage tanks okay that is worth around uh, let's say 1 lakh per unit and the tanks have a useful life of let's say 10 years and a scrap value which is closely around 11,000 so the company uses over here the double 
declining depreciation method here specifically for calculating the depreciation expense for the tanks so the depreciation rate formula here as per the straight line method will be is equal to 1 divided by useful life of the assets that is uh, if we calculate the useful life here which was 10 years okay, that gives us 10 percent as the rate so the depreciation uh, period double declining method will be 10 into 10 percent into 2 that gives us 20 percent so the depreciation for the subsequent years considering the storage tanks are bought at the start of the financial year which are as follow probably you know it will start from the beginning and uh, they, it will be something like this let's say the book value at the beginning of the year let's say is 1 lakh the depreciation is let's say 20 percent and then the depreciation expense will be 1 lakh into 20 percent that's 20,000 so the value will be 80,000 so now this 80,000 will be carried forward here and this will all remain the same and rest is the history this is how the whole thing will be divided 64 51 200 and so on and so forth so well this is how the whole process will be done so the depreciation expense for the year let me just pull this down so this will come down to 80,000 the depreciation expense for the year 2028 is kept as closely around 2684 which is kept to maintain the salvage value at the end of the 10 years okay so well yeah so well for the 40 units the depreciation table will be just that you know you just need to change to 4 lakh so things will have a different value so the book value uh, for 40 units depreciation expense for the year 2028 is kept as closely around 10,737 well after learning all these examples i want to make you understand what are the advantages of these see advantages is that first of all it helps you to spread the cost of the or the cost of the investment in fixed asset across the useful life of an asset so these way uh, this way the company does not have to account for the cost in the first year else the company will have to suffer losses in the year of the purchase second it helps to provide the correct market value of the asset thereby reflecting the wear and tear of the asset might have and had the basis the number of the year it had been useful for and third it helps to generate the tax savings for the company then comes the limitation first it is usually considered to be a constant for the particular class of asset and hence it reflects the estimated value for the depreciation every year the useful life of an asset and hence the depreciation depends on many other factors like the way of an way an asset is handled a number of hours is operated for quality of the parts of the assets which are not reflected in the depreciation rate usually second for an asset like it asset which are upgraded from time to time it is difficult to ascertain the actual depreciation rate since the value of the asset varies you know the uh, actual depreciation also varies so the further it complicates the calculation of the depreciation rate so let me put down my final conclusion on this the depreciation rate is used by the company for calculation of the depreciation in the assets owned by them and de it depends on the rates issued by the income tax department poor methods of calculating the depreciation rate may distort both the profit and loss account and balance sheet for the company and hence a fair understanding of the same is very important i hope you hi guys have learned from this particular topic if you have uh, if you have liked and enjoyed or learned and enjoyed the watching this video please like comment on this video and subscribe our channel for all the latest updates thank you everyone for choosing the channel